हेलो एवरीवन गुड इवनिंग टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग लाइपोप्रोटीन मेटाबॉलिज्म आई शैल बी टेकिंग यू थ्रू दिस मेटाबॉलिक पाथवे आई नो इट इज वन ऑफ द डिफिकल्ट मेटाबॉलिक पाथवे I will be little slow on this so that you understand the topic completely not very slow do not worry i know biochemistry is not one of the favorite subjects for most of the students and i am dr sonam bhatia md from mulana azad medical college new delhi i have also done dnb in biochemistry so let's get started the specific learning objectives for today will be to know the general structure of lipoproteins what are apolipoproteins we will be also discussing the metabolism for chylomicron vldl ldl and hdl and whatever is the corresponding clinical correlation i suppose all of us will be fine with english and i will be using hindi here and there but not much do not worry for those who do not understand hindi especially from those who have joined from south of the india now what is the structure of a lipoprotein now here you will have to use your imagination the lipoprotein is a spherical in shape with the outer there is a shell and there is an inner hydrophobic core in the outer shell because the lipoprotein has to travel in an aqueous environment on the outside we will find the polar lipids or the lipids which have arranged in such a way that on the outside is the polar part of the lipid you can say because by definition a lipid can never be soluble in water by definition we know that lipids are those which are either soluble in chloroform benzene or non organic solvents so on the outer side is the polar lipid on the inner side is the hydrophobic core as given in the diagram the phospholipids is one of the polar lipids it is one of the polar lipids the another polar lipid which is present on the outside is cholesterol we have cholesterol which is also polar lipid and is present on the outer side when we used to draw the structure for the biological membranes even in the biological membranes we used to draw phosphate group head group on the outer side and the tails r1 and r2 on the inner side of course you might remember from the fluid mosaic model you might have drawn this many a times in starting from your class 11th 12th and even in the first year mbbs that the lipid which is present in the biological membranes forms the bileaflet it has an outer leaflet and there is an inner leaflet and in between the outer and the inner leaflet at somewhere there can be integral proteins there can be peripheral proteins but the lipoprotein is not a two leaflet structure it is only a unilamellar structure you will only find on the outside one single layer of phospholipid and in between this phospholipid is present free cholesterol at some of the places at some of the places you will find the free cholesterol which is present now but majority of it will be phospholipid and some way of the spaces is occupied by the free cholesterol now this is on the outside then what is present in the inner hydrophobic core the inner hydrophobic core is formed by the neutral lipid when we say there is a neutral lipid neutral lipid means it is a triacylglycerol or the ester form of cholesterol in the given diagram you can see here this triacylglycerol is present in the core and it is the non 
पोलर लिपिड इन द सेम डायग्राम यू कैन से दैट कोलेस्ट्राइल एस्टर इज ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट इन दाइड्रोफोबिक कोर एंड इज द नॉन पोलर लिपिड नॉन पोलर लिपिड एंड अलाउ मी टू यूज सम स्पेस सो दैट आई कैन डिस्कस द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ कोलेस्ट्रॉल वेन वी ड्रॉ द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ कोलेस्ट्रॉल इट इज अूज स्ट्रक्चर मेड ऑफ ए बी सी डी न्यूक्लियस एंड दिस होल स्ट्रक्चर यू डो नॉट हैव टू रिमेंबर द स्ट्रक्चर फॉर नाउ वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू एम्फेसाइज इज this is a 27 carbon molecule known as cholesterol known as cholesterol if you see the structure closely at the third position here the third position here is occupied by the hydroxyl group at the third position is occupied by the hydroxyl group and that is why cholesterol is considered to be slightly polar and is present on the outer side but if i remove this hydrogen from here and instead i attach let's say a fatty acid of course it will be an ester linkage of a fatty acid if i attach a fatty acid at this site now it will become cholesterol ester now it shall become cholesterol ester the cholesterol ester on the other hand is not it is not it has no part which is polar in nature now it is completely non polar lipid the whole ring is very non polar in nature now we have added a whole fatty acid chain to it it has become a huge non polar structure so this cholesterol ester is a non polar structure coming back to the general structure of a lipoprotein i repeat on the outer side is present the polar lipid those are two in numbers we have phospholipid and we have free cholesterol free cholesterol on the inner hydrophobic core we have two lipids one of them is the non polar cholesterol ester and another one is triacylglycerol triacylglycerol you know to the glycerol when we attach one fatty acid monoacyl to the glycerol you attach two fatty acid diacyl to the glycerol you attach three fatty acid triacylglycerol so triacylglycerol has no scope of any polar component in it it is completely non polar structure so you have outer side you have inner hydrophobic core the arrangement is so so that it can move in the aqueous environment we will be discussing the metabolic pathway in detail so the structure of a typical lipoprotein will also have protein part in it we have yet only discussed lipids we haven't seen the protein yet now this ribbon like structure which you can see this one here and this one here this is the protein component of the lipoprotein and this protein component of the lipoprotein is called apolipoprotein apo means only so for example you might have also heard another terminology apo enzyme apo enzyme means only protein part of the enzyme likewise apo lipoprotein means only protein part of the lipoprotein so we have now yet seen the lipid component and of course there will be an associated protein component so a typical lipoprotein this is a general structure whether it can be any lipoprotein which we shall be discussing in a while from now any lipoprotein 
which is which is present in the human body will have outer uh, they, there will be an outer shell and an inner hydrophobic core it is towards the outer shell that they, you will find there is protein associated with it now this protein let's first talk about the apolipoprotein part because most of the students they are not very uh, they do not know the functions what the apolipoprotein does very clearly they know that yes there is some protein component associated with it but when asked what is this function they are not very clear about it first let's see the variety or the types of apolipoproteins there are various types of apolipoproteins these may include you have apolipoprotein a a is further of many types a1 a2 a3 a4 mainly 1 and 2 are present they are all present on hdl and of course small part of apolipoprotein a can be given to the other lipoproteins like chylomicron vldl but for a very small time so this apolipoprotein a is present mainly on hdl when we'll be talking about the metabolism of hdl in detail this will come back again we'll come back to this again then we have apolipoprotein b b is only of two varieties you have a b48 b100 b48 is unique to chylomicron and b100 is present on vldl and ldl rather when we will be discussing the ldl metabolism little later you will see that the ldl has only one apolipoprotein and that is b100 then apolipoprotein c c is also of various types you have c1 c2 c3 various types of apolipoprotein c you have apolipoprotein d this is also present on the hdl and you have apolipoprotein e apolipoprotein e is of several types you have e1 e2 e3 e4 and it is associated with all the um, all the lipoproteins except for ldl ldl is unique it has only one apolipoprotein and that is b100 so these are the various types of apolipoproteins quickly there is a b c d and e not difficult to remember because they all are sequence of alphabets and of course these are capital all in capital letters but what are their functions okay we have understood now the structure has it but what are its functions they are the structural component of the lipoprotein they form the structure of the lipoprotein the they act as cofactors we will be seeing this in detail in a while when we will be discussing the metabolism they also act as inhibitors to the enzyme they are not only activators they also act as inhibitors to the enzyme then we have i have given in this only that like c1 and c2 is a cofactor for the enzyme lpl and there is a1 which is an activator for the enzyme lcat what is lpl what is lcat we'll be discussing this do not worry the enzyme inhibitor for the uh, enzyme lpl is a2 and c3 it's given in here and c1 apolipoprotein c1 is an inhibitor to cetp again what is this terminology cetp let's see in a while they also act as ligands for various receptors for example for the ldl receptor there is a uh, there are two apolipoproteins which will act as ligand one is b100 and another is e similarly there is another receptor known as scavenger receptor b1 for scavenger receptor b1 apolipoprotein a1 will act as a ligand it's not mentioned here we will see then let's talk about chylomicron metabolism now before we discuss the metabolism 
let's see the various types of lipoproteins the various types of lipoproteins we will be having four types of lipoproteins number 1 yes chylomicron we'll be discussing the metabolism for each one by one number 2 vldl number 3 ldl number 4 and last one is hdl but not the least it is the good one you might have all heard that ldl is the bad cholesterol it has very bad reputation in market and hdl is the good cholesterol having very good reputation in the market now where is chylomicron coming from just an introduction let's see the chylomicron comes from the intestine where does vldl comes from vldl comes from the liver what about ldl ldl comes from vldl not many students are clear about it but it is coming from vldl it is actually vldl when it is metabolized once whatever is left it is and rich in cholesterol that will become ldl we'll see that in a while where is hdl coming from technically hdl can come from anywhere by and large it comes from intestine and liver i hope yahan tak there is no confusion right so the we have four types of lipoproteins chylomicron vldl ldl and hdl now these types of lipoproteins they also have a specific they have all the same diameter uh, the same uh, general structure which we have seen but they all have different diameter when we move from chylomicron to hdl when we see from chylomicron to hdl the diameter tends to decrease what i mean to say is that chylomicron is a very big particle and hdl is very small and in between vldl ldl and the least one is hdl so chylomicron largest hdl smallest and when we move from chylomicron to hdl on the other hand there is something known as density of the lipoprotein the density tends to increase the density tends to increase so chylomicron is a very large particle low in density hdl is a small particle but has highest density and hence its name high density lipoprotein so is true for vldl it is very low density lipoprotein and so is true for ldl low density lipoprotein but the lowest one it gets its name from chyle because if you see a serum which is having turbidity in it that is because of chylomicron we'll discuss that also so we have four lipoproteins of course they will have a lipid component in it and they will have a protein component in it the lipid component in the chylomicron is around 99% the protein component is around 1 to 2% only in vldl it is 90% lipid around 10% protein ldl is around 80% lipid and around 20% protein and the so called good cholesterol hdl is 57% lipid and only 43% protein only 43% protein and hence it is very good because it has a very high 
protein content it does not have a very high lipid content one of the contributions of why it is good and of course we'll talk about why it is actually good but that is also part of it why it is being good cholesterol because its cholesterol content is very low it has very high protein content and this is by and large the distribution of chylomicron vldl ldl and hdl how much lipid and protein components they are having now out of all these lipoproteins quickly tell me in the chat box which of these will have lowest electrophoretic mobility which of these will have lowest electrophoretic mobility let's see fastest finger first so i suppose you will be writing about chylomicron because it is having very low protein content and because its protein content is very low it will be having very lowest electrophoretic mobility and on the contrary hdl will have the highest electrophoretic mobility the another topics which we will be discussing is the metabolism so far we have seen the structure we have talked about apolipoproteins and we have talked about the types of lipoproteins let's now see the chylomicron metabolism one by one we'll be discussing metabolism let's start with chylomicron now all the diagrams which you will see in this slides will be from harper right do not worry right most of the students are afraid of the book there is no need to be i will be explaining all the diagrams and i suppose this will you this way you will be having some uh, exposure to the book it's not a difficult book actually the only thing is the english sometimes na it becomes little too much so it takes time for people to absorb harper but I, let me give you some exposure about it we'll be only discussing the diagrams do not worry so we are starting with the chylomicron metabolism now try and find in this diagram where is intestine try and find in this diagram where is extra hepatic tissue try and locate in the diagram where is liver all right so we are now starting with the chylomicron metabolism whatever dietary triacylglycerol people have consumed those who have been invited and have eaten on anant ambani's and radhika merchant's pre wedding bash their triacylglycerol let's see what is happening to their triacylglycerol now right so immediately after eating food the food is mainly rich in the dietary triacylglycerol and you of course eat cholesterol there must be on the wedding some type of cholesterol phospholipid but the major lipid which is present in the food is always triacylglycerol this triacylglycerol will go to the small intestine in the small intestine it is covered and form a chylomicron this chylomicron will now be circulated throughout the body the first formed chylomicron located in the diagram it is coming via lymphatics into the blood stream finally via lymphatics it will reach the blood stream only so chylomicron chyle like milky appearance turbid appearance molecule it gives turbidity to the serum this molecule is having only or mainly one apolipoprotein and that is b48 in the diagram small amount of a is given but do not worry a is negligible it has mainly b48 and this is nascent chylomicron this nascent chylomicron goes into the circulation collides with the molecule hdl can you look at hdl in the figure this one here is hdl it is good one it's not very difficult to find good people so this one is hdl this hdl collides with the nascent chylomicron 
gives away some of the apolipoproteins to the nascent chylomicron which now becomes mature chylomicron. The mature chylomicron and the nascent chylomicron, see the difference between the two. In the nascent chylomicron, there is present only B48. In the mature chylomicron, there is B48 and other apolipoproteins which it has got from HDL. Now this mature chylomicron goes to the extrahepatic tissue where is present the enzyme lipoprotein lipase. The lipoprotein lipase will cleave off the triacylglycerol to glycerol and free fatty acid. You might have heard of some terminologies like intestinal lipase, hepatic lipase, pancreatic lipase. Any lipase which is present anywhere, it will always cleave off triacylglycerol to glycerol and free fatty acid. Now, if you can see in the diagram, the free fatty acid is taken up by the extrahepatic tissue. What about the glycerol? The glycerol will go to the liver. Whatever glycerol is released, it will always reach the liver. Now, let's talk about what will happen to the fatty acid in the extrahepatic tissue. Depending upon whether the extrahepatic tissue is a muscle, it will use it for its metabolic needs. If this extrahepatic tissue is heart, it will use it for its metabolic needs. So, extrahepatic tissue will use that free fatty acid to gain energy from it. So the basic funda of forming chylomicron is that whatever dietary triacylglycerol we have eaten, it should go to all the uh, extrahepatic tissue and distribute energy so that energy can be used by the heart, by the muscle and so that people can dance at Diljeet's song, right? And that might was what has happened, I, I suppose, right? As you know, I am here, I did not go. So, I was preparing for this lecture. I did not go, that is why. On the other hand, now what will happen is, whatever is left is known as chylomicron remnant. This remnant will go to the liver. On the surface of the liver, there has to be a receptor to receive the chylomicron remnant and this chylomicron remnant will be taken up by the liver as you can see here there is a very famous receptor known as LDL receptor APOB100E. Actually what happened is when it was discovered it was discovered during the studies on LDL so it was called LDL receptor but later it was found that it, this receptor can bind to either B100 or to E and that can be taken up by the LDL receptor. Now, let's see what is LDL receptor taking up. It is binding to either B100 or to E. But if you see carefully, chylomicron remnant does not have B100. Only E is left to act as ligand and endocytosis will occur. So, the chylomicron remnant will be taken up by the liver with the help of only apolipoprotein E. Now, let's see on the other hand what was VLDL metabolism. When we will discuss the VLDL metabolism, the story of VLDL metabolic pathway will look like the chylomicron pathway. So, it will be a revision of chylomicron metabolism also. Now, it looks similar. Try and locate liver in this diagram. Try to locate extrahepatic tissue in this diagram. Let's see. From the liver comes a nascent VLDL molecule like chylomicron this nascent VLDL is having mainly B100. It goes into the circulation collides with our good cholesterol and it gets apolipoprotein C and E and becomes mature VLDL. The mature VLDL 
goes to the extra hepatic tissue where is present the enzyme LPL this lipoprotein lipase will cleave off triacylglycerol to glycerol and free fatty acid whatever glycerol is released it will go to the liver whatever free fatty acid is released it will be taken up by the extra hepatic tissue for energy now whatever is left VLDL remnant or some authors like to call it as IDL. I haven't discussed IDL when we were discussing type of lipoproteins because it is a very short lived intermediate and it is intermediate density lipoprotein. It lives for a very small time. At times what happens is now so far the IDL which we have received or the VLDL remnant which we have received one of the fates for VLDL remnant is to go to the liver. On the surface of the liver is present the same receptor which is your LDL receptor APOB100E. This receptor can either bind to B100 or E and because VLDL remnant has both B100 and E, any of the two can act as a ligand and endocytosis will occur. Now, so far the story of the metabolism of chylomicron is similar to that of the metabolic pathway of VLDL. Except few major changes. Change number one. When we discussed chylomicron, it comes from the intestine. On the other hand, VLDL is coming from the liver. Throughout chylomicron was having B48. Throughout VLDL is having B100. Also, whatever triacylglycerol chylomicron is carrying, that is dietary triacylglycerol. Whatever triacylglycerol VLDL is carrying, that is endogenous triacylglycerol. Now, this is similar to what we have seen for chylomicron. Ab story may a twist. Now this is a Bollywood twist. Some of the ideal molecules or the VLDL remnants, they lose most of their triacylglycerol. Such molecules have now become LDL. If they lose most of their triacylglycerol, they will become a molecule which is rich in cholesterol and has only one apolipoprotein and that is B100. This molecule is nothing but it is LDL. This molecule is nothing but LDL. Why is LDL formed? If we see what is the purpose of LDL? LDL will go everywhere and distribute cholesterol. That is the purpose of LDL. LDL distributes cholesterol. So far, we have seen VLDL, chylomicron and LDL. All of them are distributing lipids to the other tissues. And before we discuss the last lipoprotein, HDL, let's see few important points number one is yeah, there is a terminology lpl lpl stands for lipoprotein lipase and there is another terminology both are lipases that is hormone sensitive lipase hormone sensitive lipase this hormone sensitive lipase, I haven't discussed in today's lecture. This lipase, any lipase will do the same function. Both of them, they cleave off triacylglycerol to glycerol and free fatty acid. Both of them are present in adipose tissue. The only difference is, Along with the adipose tissue, the LPL is present in the other extrahepatic tissues also. It is present in the other extrahepatic tissues also. 
hormone sensitive lipase only in the adipose tissue another difference is the lipoprotein lipase is present in the blood vessel on the other hand it is an intravascular enzyme the hormone sensitive lipase on the other hand is a intracellular enzyme it is present inside the cell it is present inside the cell so these are the major differences and there is a hormone known as insulin a very famous one insulin insulin has different roles on the two enzymes the insulin will activate lipoprotein lipase but it will inhibit the hormone sensitive lipase so that is the major difference between lpl and hormone sensitive lipase for especially for those who are preparing for the competitive examination questions like this these are very important if you are preparing for the first year mbbs usually you can skip this much uh, this topic difference between lpl and hormone sensitive lipase not usually asked but yes chylomicron vldl metabolism ldl formation and hdl metabolism which is the next topic very important and by the way we have talked about two apolipoproteins one is b100 and b48 what is the difference between b100 and b48 let's see the b100 there is the dna is same for b100 the dna is of course present in liver because vldl comes from liver and b48 comes from the intestine and the dna is also present in the intestine and is the dna is same whether you are forming b100 or b48 dna is exactly same you know central dogma dna forms mrna the mrna is also same except at the 48% of the length of the mrna there is one codon which gets replaced c spontaneously gets deaminated to u and instead of forming caa now we get uaa and uaa is a stop codon what is the effect of this as an effect of this the protein which is formed from b100 is of complete length of the mrna but the protein which is formed from b48 is only 48% of the length of mrna and hence its name b48 hence its name b48 so b100 b48 same dna mrna similar only one deamination took place at cytosine which became uracil and this a phenomena is known as rna editing this phenomena where rna decides the length of the protein is called rna editing it is called rna editing with this we have now come to a point where we are going to discuss the last metabolism and that is reverse cholesterol transport or the hdl metabolism this is one of the most commonly asked questions be it competitive examinations be it the mbbs first year examination and even you'll find many drugs which are acting to lower the lipoproteins there are many drugs which tend to decrease the ldl there are many drugs which tend to increase hdl especially in nicotinic acid fibrates they tend to increase the hdl even exercise if we do 
let's see what is actually hdl doing and why we are so fond of it why we are calling it good cholesterol now try and locate in the diagram liver try to locate in the diagram intestine and from both intestine and liver comes a poorly lipidated molecule which is discoidal hdl focus on few points i know this is lot of information on this slide not everything you need to remember we'll focus on few important ones only now no, locate this discoidal hdl actually it is true to its name because it is a disc like structure and this discoidal hdl it will go to the extra hepatic tissue this one pink one here is the extra hepatic tissue and this extra hepatic tissue has various proteins you do not have to remember all the names they are fancy names you do not need to know all of them just remember one of them which is most important and that is srb1 srb1 stands for scavenger receptor b1 this scavenger receptor b1 will cause cholesterol efflux from the extra hepatic tissues to make pre, uh, discoidal hdl to hdl3 have you understood what has happened try to focus again come start from discoidal hdl the discoidal hdl goes to the extra hepatic tissues and once it reaches the extra hepatic tissues the extra hepatic tissue will give the cholesterol to the discoidal hdl so that now the discoidal hdl becomes a sphere it is no more disc like it becomes a spherical structure this spherical hdl spheroid spherical hdl is called hdl3 even if you do not remember very specifically it is hdl3 remember it is hdl one form of hdl the hdl is acted upon by a very important enzyme known as lcat lcat stands for lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase the function of this enzyme is to convert cholesterol which now hdl has got from the extra hepatic tissues and it will convert that cholesterol to cholesterol ester so try and understand i repeat starting from discoidal hdl the discoidal hdl goes to the extra hepatic tissue and says knock knock whatever extra cholesterol you have give it to me the extra hepatic tissues open the gate srb1 whatever extra cholesterol is present whoosh it goes into the hdl now this hdl becomes a sphere this spherical hdl is hdl3 it already has an enzyme lcat and its activator is apolipoprotein a1 must activator for this enzyme the lcat converts cholesterol to cholesterol ester i repeat it converts cholesterol to cholesterol ester this cholesterol ester drops inside because when we discuss the structure for lipoproteins from our first few slides we said that cholesterol is present on the outer side and cholesterol ester is present in the inner hydrophobic core so there is cholesterol on the outside it drops inside and form and is formed in the form of cholesterol ester as a result it now becomes hdl2 and because it is richer in cholesterol ester hdl is another reason is it is a good cholesterol it because it doesn't have much of cholesterol it has converted its cholesterol to cholesterol ester by the help of the enzyme lcat lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase which is requiring apolipoprotein a1 this hdl goes on to the liver the same receptor srb1 in the liver takes the 
HDL. Now note the same receptor in the extrahepatic tissue cholesterol efflux. The same receptor in the liver cholesterol influx. So it's the same receptor but two different roles. In the same receptor in the extrahepatic tissue causes efflux. In the liver it causes influx. Now I hope you have understood the HDL metabolism. I have put a lot of effort in it. If there is any query, put it in the chat box. Now, in one important thing I would emphasize that the HDL is the only lipoprotein which is taking the lipid from the extrahepatic tissue and delivering it to the liver. Before this, all the other lipoproteins, they were taking the lipid from the ex from the other tissues and depositing it in extrahepatic tissues. But this time the lipid is taken back from the extrahepatic tissue to the liver. And that is why it is reverse cholesterol transport. And liver can take care of all types of lipids. Liver has all types of metabolizing enzyme and everything can be taken care. So with this we have covered reverse cholesterol transport. This is an overall slide to discuss the fate of cholesterol. Just analyze this enzyme. What I am trying to tell you here is there is a cell. This whole is one cell. This is one cell. This whole cell is taking cholesterol and giving out cholesterol. It is taking cholesterol number one through the LDL receptor. Number two, it is taking through a scavenger receptor or non-regulated pathway. This is a minor pathway. Some of the cholesterol can go via an independent receptor independent pathway. Everything has gone inside and has formed cholesterol inside the cell. And then there are pathways which use this cholesterol to either form cholesterol ester or for the synthesis of steroids or they will give this cholesterol to the HDL molecule. So, I, what I am trying to tell you here is there are certain pathways which I have now highlighted in green which are telling us that cholesterol tends to increase inside the cell. There are certain pathways which I have highlighted in red which are trying to tell that there is, there is distribution of that cholesterol to various pathways and outside the cell also there is a balance between these two pathways. And these two pathways tend to have a balance. The green pathways which are causing cholesterol to come in and the red pathways which are causing cholesterol to be utilized. So this diagram is telling us that there is regulation of cholesterol at the tissue level. Then the what are the biological reference intervals for the various types of lipoproteins which we have seen. The various types of lipoproteins which we are now seeing, there is a serum cholesterol which should be between, in normal individuals it should be between 150 to 200. The desirable LDL cholesterol level is below 130 milligram per deciliter. The desirable HDL cholesterol should be above 60 milligram per deciliter. It's a good one. We want it more. The serum triacylglycerol normal is 50 to 150. And there is something known as lipoprotein small a. This should be less than 30. If it is more, then it poses one at risk of coronary artery disease. The lipoprotein small a is made of one mole of LDL and one mole of apolipoprotein small a. One mole of LDL and one mole of apolipoprotein small a. 
So that was lipoprotein small a. This small apolipoprotein small a is not same as apolipoprotein large a. Large a was present on the HDL or the big A. The small a poses one at risk. Now the last topic for the day is dyslipoproteinemias. Now we have seen the uh, normal ringinges. We have seen the metabolism. Let's see what are the conditions. There can be dyslipoproteinemia which includes both hyper as well as hypolipoproteinemias. In the diagram which is given at the right corner top, can you locate there is a uh, vacutainer and this vacutainer has a separated serum and the serum is chyle-like. It is having chylomicrons in it. So it is chylomicron which gives turbidity. Otherwise uh, serum is, it is completely transparent. All right, or by and large it is transparent. It can be slightly translucent, but this much, of course, this one is a milky appearance of the serum and that is lipoprotein lipase deficiency type 1 hyperlipoproteinemia. In this, there will be because LPL is defective. The lipoprotein which will increase will be mainly chylomicron and of course VLDL also. And because both chylomicron and VLDL are rich in triacylglycerol, there will be increase in serum triacylglycerol. Because these are the things which we calculate in blood. We do not calculate lipoprotein, chylomicron, LDL, VLDL. We are calculating this triacylglycerol cholesterol from which we will calculate the LDL indirectly. So this will give you direct representation in the blood. If you see the report of a patient, this is what you are looking for. Now, the most common hyperlipoproteinemia of all of these is type 2 hyperlipoproteinemia, which is the receptor defect, LDL receptor defect. And because LDL was the only lipoprotein which was having B100, if the receptor is defective and receptor was having two parts, B100 and E, it is actually the mutation of the B100 portion. There will be increase in LDL. There will be increase in cholesterol. The type 3 is dysbeta lipoproteinemia. It is increase in the remnant VLDL and remnant chylomicron. There will be increase in triacylglycerol. Small amount of increase in cholesterol also is seen. Type 4 is hypertriacylglycerolemia by a mechanism not completely understood there is overproduction of VLDL and because the lipoprotein VLDL has increased which is rich in triacylglycerol the increased lipid which you are looking for is triacylglycerol in the serum and then there is a fifth variety mixed hyperlipidemia where there is increase in VLDL chylomicron and of course because they are rich in triacylglycerol they are looking for triacylglycerol. Out of all these the most commonly uh, seen is familial hypercholesterolemia which is type 2 based on the Fredrickson's classification which is defective LDL receptor. LDL receptor was having two parts, B100 and E. It is the mutation of the B100 region. And this is how you can see a familial hypercholesterolemia. There can be Achilles tendon A. In the B, there is tendinous xanthoma which is seen. Then xanthalismas, there is deposition of cholesterol in the eyelids. Then D is arcus cornealis. Cornea is having grayish white ring, cholesterol infiltration in the cornea. If you see this kind of a picture or if in the examination they have, they are telling you this kind, it is most likely familial hypercholesterolemia and it runs in families. A child having a, a son worried about his health somewhere around 40 years of age because his uncle had a similar disease. His father died because of a heart attack or MI. That is 
where you are looking for this disorder. Now, if there is a hyperlipoproteinemia, there is hypolipoproteinemia as well. Hypolipoproteinemia is a mutation of one of the disorders is Tangier's disease. Characteristic manifestation is the yellow-orange tonsils. And this is mutation of the ATP binding cassette transporter A1. I haven't explained this, this transporter in detail, but it was the transporter which we have seen in the HDL transport mechanism and is present in the extrahepatic tissues for cholesterol efflux, the same one. The last and not the least one is A beta lipoproteinemia absence of B100 and B48. Please note here there is a defect in the MTTP gene. This MTTP gene codes for mi microsomal triglyceride protein. This protein is responsible for the, the whole structure VLDL assembly or the chylomicron assembly to take place. Actually the B100 and B48 will be assembled in that lipid structure to form that lipoprotein. But if the protein does not get inside that lipoprotein, you just have a lipid ball. There is no protein component in it. So you do not have a VLDL and you do not have a chylomicron. Do not confuse the A beta lipoproteinemia with deficiency in beta lipoproteins. No, it is not just the deficiency of beta lipoproteins. It is absence of B100 and B48 due to which there is defective chylomicron or no chylomicron or no VLDL synthesis. The signs and symptoms of this disorder will be a result of severe deficiency of fat and fat soluble vitamins most commonly ADEK those are the ones out of which the most common is vitamin E deficiency. I hope you like the lecture thank you all do subscribe it right so that we can see each other again thank you so much